how, how can a game change your life? I'm not speaking in a metaphorical, this helped me through rough times way. This game, if taken seriously, will change the way you think and feel. So, what is this game? Nothing. Yes, in this video, I'm going to explain how a game about literally doing nothing can change your life. You're just ruining it. You're Look at my lips. You're ruining it. So, what is nothing? Nothing, in its own words, is a game about doing nothing. When you launch the game, you will be prompted to press any key to do nothing. After you press a key, a timer will start. This timer shows how long you've been doing nothing in seconds. If you move your mouse, tab out, switch to a second monitor, or press any button on your keyboard, you will lose. Okay, I've explained the what, now let's explain the how. How will this change my life? But to do that, I need to explain what the two problems are. The first problem, the fear of missing out, or FOMO, as I'll be calling it from now on. FOMO is the feeling of anxiety that comes from not being in the loop. An example of FOMO might be you see your friends with a new water bottle, so you also buy one to fit in. You didn't want some silly water bottle, but if you didn't get it, you were scared that you would be excluded from the friend group. This is the fear of missing out. So how exactly does this hurt you? Sure, it might make you feel left out or maybe even feel silly for buying an overpriced product you didn't even want, but that's all, right? Well, sadly, no. A study done in China took over 600 colleges and graduate students and asked them to fill out questionnaires. The questions were related to social avoidance, loneliness, solitude and eccentricity. One example of a question was, I feel lonely when no one is with me. The questionnaires were on a five point scale, which is just a fancy way of saying students can answer one to five, one being strongly disagree and five being strongly agree. The result of the study found positive relationships between FOMO and depression, anxiety and stress. It was also tied to social avoidance and loneliness. This means that the fear of missing out can negatively affect your mental health. But FOMO isn't anything I should be worried about, right? Well, if you use social media, it actually should be. A study done by JWT Intelligence in 2012 showed that almost 40% of individuals aged 12 to 67 said that social media had increased their fear of missing out. Some sites now claim it to be as much as 56% of people in 2024. So if you don't have this fear of missing out, it's almost guaranteed that one of your friends or family members do. Now, if this wasn't bad enough, FOMO is also used against you by advertisers. You know that FOMO example I used earlier? That wasn't a random idea I pulled out of thin air. That was the Stanley Cup, a water bottle that went viral in 2023. Need another example? Look at Prime Energy by Logan Paul and KSI. People in the UK were buying bottles for hundreds of great British pounds just to fit in. Another example? Apple with the iPhone. They purposefully make Android users stand out in group chats, so they feel like they need to go and buy an iPhone just to have a blue bubble. I could go on for hours about this topic. If you look around, FOMO is being weaponized against all of us every single day. FOMO also has ties to my next topic, doom scrolling. So what is doom scrolling? Doom scrolling is mindlessly scrolling through social media for a prolonged period of time, sometimes even hours at a time. As an example, let's say you were getting ready to go to bed, but you thought, I'll just quickly check TikTok. You see one funny video and scroll to the next and the next and the next. By the time you've actually gotten off your phone, you see the sun rising and the birds singing. It's the morning. You've been mindlessly scrolling for eight hours. That is doom scrolling. Okay, but how does doom scrolling affect me? Well, on top of the mental health harms that come from FOMO, such as anxiety or depression, doom scrolling has also been linked to sleeping disorders, weight gain, fatigue, and high blood pressure, just to name a few. So how on earth can a silly game about doing nothing help fight against all of this? Well, it's because the game forces you to not use the computer, sit in silence, and focus on the here and now and you can use these things to your benefit by practicing mindfulness. But isn't mindfulness some hippie rubbish that has no scientific backing? Well, while this is a common belief held by lots of people, myself included at one point, there are many studies that show practicing mindfulness does actually help with mental health. One study found, quote, moderate and consistent evidence for mindfulness. Another states mindfulness-based interventions or MBIs have demonstrated efficiency in reducing anxiety and depression symptom severity in a broad range of treatment seeking individuals. For the sake of time, I won't keep quoting studies, however I will leave them in the description along with all other citations for this video. 
So, we know that mindfulness is real, but what are the benefits? According to the Mental Health Foundation UK, mindfulness can boost concentration, reduce stress, and help people who have been depressed avoid relapsing. Now we understand the effects and how mindfulness can help, let's move on how to use the game to practice mindfulness. I'll break these down to four steps and tips. Number one, start up the game and set an achievable time goal. If you're someone who needs constant mental stimulation, I would recommend setting a target of one minute. If you think you can go longer, maybe try two or even three minutes. Everyone will be different, so don't feel bad or silly for setting a goal of one minute. I will say, I wouldn't personally suggest a goal less than one minute for most people, as you need to feel a little bit of discomfort for this to be effective. Second, commit to doing nothing. Mute any distractions you may have, such as your phone notifications, Discord, Snapchat, etc. Also, doing nothing doesn't mean just sitting in one place for a whole minute. It mostly means don't do activities that will overly stimulate your brain, such as scrolling through your phone. Maybe you look out your window or listen around for sounds. Maybe you want to walk around your room. Just let your brain give you these thoughts and roll with them. There is no wrong or right way of doing this. Number three, push past the discomfort and anxiety of doing nothing. You will feel uncomfortable and that's totally normal. Just remember that you are in control and you can stop doing nothing at any time you want to. Don't worry about the timer at first, it is just there to help you keep on track if you've met your goal. If you're an overthinker, like me, you may feel like you're not doing enough nothing, if that even makes sense. However, as long as you're away from distractions and are having your alone time, you are doing perfectly. Lastly, understand that the way you feel isn't unique. We all feel uncomfortable and weird when we first start. You will get past it. The more you do this, the easier it becomes. And honestly, it became a part of my day I look forward to. Whether you hit the goal or not, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that you do it consistently. That's about it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. I've been me, you've been you, and FOMO has just been ruined by mass.